Starting your own practice is hard for many chiropractors. It's riddled with both struggles and successes. But here at the Chiropractic Philanthropist, we make it easy by having chiropreneurs and entrepreneurs share their struggles and lessons learned in life and business so that you don't have to make the same mistakes. And now, here's your host, Dr. Ed Osborne. Hey everyone, I'm Dr. Josh Han here for the Chiropractic Philanthropist Podcast. I have an amazing guest today, someone who's near and dear to my heart. Um, I like to call him my uncle, but this is Dr. Kevin Fogarty. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Josh. It's good to be here, and I'm very privileged to be talking to my almost <laughs> nephew here. <laughs> yeah, so so I just everybody knows I've known Kevin. God, I'm probably since I'm you know knee high, really uh, since I'm a kid and. Um, he's been a great influence on me as a chiropractor, so I couldn't think of a better person to bring on to the show. So in, in the show, we, we say that, you know, we're all more alike than we are different. So tell us a little bit about you. Oh, I'm a 1985 graduate of Palmer College of Chiropractic. So I've been in practice roughly 37, 38 years. Um, I live in Florida, so that's where I practice. And, uh, and it's a family practice. So it's a little of everything, cradle to grave. That's how I was brought up in chiropractic. And so I see little tiny babies and we see little old people and everybody in between, which is a great thing. Um, throughout my career, I was told by one of my uh, influencers to go ahead and to get involved in, in the profession. And he always taught me, the more you give, the more you'll get back. And we've heard that metaphysically, and we always thought growing up, oh, that's a metaphysical quote, that's really nice. But that is really the truth. The more you give, truly, the more you get back. And the more I, I can't do enough for the profession, and the profession has been very, very good for me. And over the years, uh, giving back, I've, I've been the honor of, of uh, being the president of the State Society. Um, I've gone on from there where I've been appointed by the governor of the great state of Florida. We like to call it free Florida now um, as and as a um, as a board member for the Board of Chiropractic, which is our regulatory board. I've done that for over 10 years, five years as, as its chair. And I just came off of that. I find that I gravitate towards chiropractors and chiropractic. Uh, I got involved with Life University many, many years ago, and it just resonated with me. And because of that, I went ahead and gave my time, talent, and treasure to the university. And in doing so, they uh, decided that maybe I'd make a good board member. So I became a member of their board probably about 10, 12 years ago, and I've been a chairman of Life University now for over five years, which is probably one of the exciting points of my career. That's great. So so now we know who you are as the chiropractor. Who is Kevin as the person? Who is Kevin as the person? Yeah. Kevin loves life. It's uh it's I think the Costa Ricans have a saying it's a uh, pura vita, the pure life. And um it it's it's about family to me. I've got two wonderful children and it's it's about getting together with family and friends. A uh, quick, quick story, you know, we've got, we, we took my mother's uh, recipe for, for uh, tomato sauce and we made it with my other brother and we doctored it up. So it tasted a little extra tasty, but all my neighbors heard I was gonna make this sauce. So the neighbors would come by and say, hey, can, I, can we go out on your deck with you? And I saw that you're home and we said, yeah, sure, come on over, but you've got to go inside and stir the sauce. And they said, stir the sauce. They said, just stir the sauce and come on out. They would sit out there on the deck with a few bottles of wine. And, and we had friends and family and neighbors. They all made the sauce with us, this big pot of tomato sauce. And it was just when we had everybody over for Christmas Eve, and we probably probably we had a small gathering, just about 40 people or so, everybody said, hey, this is a sauce I made, wasn't it? And I says, yeah, you made the sauce. And it was like, but it was, it's a community. It's a sense of community. And I think that's what I love about the university. It's a sense of community. It's it, for me, I love to cook. I love orchids. I love my wife. I love my kids. 
And I love my extended family because they say, well, what, you can, you got two ways of doing things. You got the family you were born into and the family you choose. And Josh, you're part of that family that we chose a long, long time ago. Oh yeah, for sure. For sure. So let's, let's, uh, let's shift for a second. Um, you know, chiropractors, chiropractors, we share quotes, we share like, you know, success quotes, affirmations with each other all the time, you know, at seminars, you know, do you have a quote or an affirmation, something that you, you know, you live by? What I live by, persistence is omnipotent. It's like, and, and that's more than a quote to me. It's how I live my life. I guarantee, and I am taking something from an actor that, that took that quote and blew it up a little bit. It's like, I'm going to outlive you. I'm going to outwork you. I'm going to go ahead. If you and I get on the treadmill tomorrow, I will die before I come off that treadmill. In chiropractic, it's the same thing. I get involved. I am involved with whatever project that I choose to get involved with, like that pig is to the bacon and egg break. The pig is to the bacon and egg break. <laughs> you know, the pig is committed. The chicken, he just lays one and just moves on. But the chick is, the chick. so I'm not a chicken, I'm a pig, right? And it's yeah. like, I, so I think it's a matter of uh, outworking people, outdoing what you need to do, and outserving. And you cannot outserve the server. Mm, that's great. That's great. So let's now, let's really take a pivot here. So we talk about success and, and the, the amazing career you've had as, as a chiropractor and as a person, you know, from a successful practice to the board in Florida, to being the board of life university and the chairman of the board, um, impacting students. You know, I love, I love the quote. You never know how far reaching something you think say or do can affect the lives of millions tomorrow. I, I think that's, you're embodying that quote by going through the phases you've been through in your career, you know, because every patient that I get to adjust, right. You had an impact on me. You know, one of my favorite things that you said, and I'm going to share a quote was we're going to, we're going to jump into a different thing. You always ask me, like, what what does responsibility mean? The and I've, that's always respond. burned in my brain, right? So, so I'm probably a teenager, you know. You know, I, you have to respond with ability and and um, and being responsible for our own lives, and it's it's very powerful. So I want to thank you all right away for that part. So let's let's transition the conversation. You know, everything sounds like so nice. It's success. We've all had struggles in life, right? We. We, I think we can bond on these and we can learn from, from each other on our, on our personal struggles or our professional struggles. Or is, there, is there something in your life that you could pinpoint to be like, this was a hard point, a struggle that I was able to grow out of and, and learn from? I think in practice, um, it, it becomes that everybody gets frustrated. Everybody gets frustrated at the patients that, that, that just sort of like, wear you down. You know, you go into a room, you're seeing 100 people a day, for instance, and you go up and you see the travel card of that one negative Nelly, and you just sort of like go, oh, what do I got to do to get through this one? And it's like, and I think it becomes to realize it's not about me. It truly is about the patient. And what do I have to do to work to change that person around? Um, you get negative with insurance companies that are dealing with it, managed care. You know, you deal with attorneys with that, that because people are, you're taking care of people and, and accidents and everything. It, I think it's the hardest thing is to say, been there, done that. It's all part of it. What do we have to do to work to get over it? And I think that's the thing to realize is that you're not by yourself. We're all in this together. And when you talk to, when you get away from all the Facebook, everything is perfect and everybody's rosy. And to realize that people are struggling. Some people have, I mean, especially with the pandemic, as you know, being in New York, people have struggled because their, their, um, their businesses were shut down for a period of time. Not in Florida, God bless us. We only were shut down for a week. But we were we were essential medical providers by the state with our work through the the Federation of Chiropractic States Licensing Boards FCLB. We had a great president Carlos Borgosian that, that went ahead and we were able to use our models 
with him. So he was able to go to other states and open up mm. other states. So they got to practice as soon as possible. So they weren't struggling quite as bad as other states. Now, there were other states that wouldn't just listen. And we understand that. So it's like the hard part is, is to realize we're all in it together. Stop poking at each other. Let's go ahead and work together to, for the greater good. And, and in my small way, I was able to go ahead and help other leaders in our profession um, set up things so we were we remained open, that they were able to keep their offices open, their states open, that they became essential medical providers and they were able to serve, give, love, and do. How amazing would it be if you could practice because you want to, not because you have to? Learn how to improve your cash flow and increase your passive income now. Go to moneyripples.com or find their podcast, The Chris Miles Money Show, to learn more. That's, I mean, that's great. You know, seeing the, the light, the light or the candle in that darkness is, it's very powerful, right? Like the, the, the past, like you know, the past two plus years have been challenging for so many. Some have prospered, um, but we've, we've all been through all of this together. And, you know, I, I agree with you as a profession, we definitely need to charge forward. More people need uh, the treasures that we have as, as chiropractors, and for I think, sure. And I think it becomes, how do you turn around the negative? The negative was COVID and everything that was there. But when you, it was to me, the ability and to many others, the ability to teach our patients that, yeah, we can say, okay, chiropractors are, are essential medical providers. Well, what do you do with that? Do you, and then you start teaching them about health. You start teaching them that we are, that the body heals itself, that the body has this innate wisdom within it. And that you can go ahead and not be a victim of COVID, but go ahead and learn to go ahead. What resource do we, resources do we have, like the chiropractors, that can go ahead and teach you about health, teach you about nutrition, teach you to go ahead and be able to be free of, of, of all this fear that's out there. I think fear gets all of us. And... It's a matter of pushing past that fear and giving ourselves the tools that are available to us by our mentors and by our, our other brothers and sisters that are out there in the field that why reinvent the wheel? Learn what other people are doing. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. Um, fear is definitely something that, that makes us pump the brakes, but being, you know, being optimistic choosing not to be afraid, choosing, you know, to use the tools that we have, you know, to teach our patients, but also those that are helping us like yourself that are, you know, in leadership roles in the profession. It's, it's, it's important. And, and I thank you for that. So let's, let's now pivot from the struggle to, you know, what's good in life. You know, what we, what, what's always need is, you know, we, we can, if we see something good, we can duplicate it, right? Like that's what we ultimately want to do is do, do, reduplicate or duplicate success. So is there like a procedure that you that you love or a marketing thing or a, anything that, that you that's working really well in practice for you in life right now that you like this is something i would definitely implement well to me the greatest invention in the world is the bent pen i take the <laughs> bent pens and i just love those things i i can go and start a conversation with anybody with this silly pen people a waitress or a waiter will come up to and they say you know, when you're at a restaurant, and they say, can I help you? And I said, certainly. Here, go ahead and use my pen. And they look at the pen and they say, would you leave it in the Florida sun a little too long? And they say, oh, is this you? And then you just start that conversation. It's a great icebreaker. Yeah. I, I spend a dollar. I give a business card. I give a bent pen out. It's like, it's it's not a new thing. It's like, I, I, I'm trying to remember who, who was it out there. Might have been Larry Markson that said, if you spend a dollar, you got to give out, you got to give out some type of advertisement. And so you're, and you're the best source of advertisement. People want to talk to you and it's giving them, it's breaking down those barriers. So what, what do I suggest to everybody? Get your name on a bent pen. That's the best thing out there. <laughs> you know, it's, it's kind of funny that you say that we even have, we've had those in our practice forever as well. And, you know, at one point, I got to, you know, me knowing more than my father in practice has been in practice, you know, three decades longer than I have, it, you know, I'm like, oh, we'll get a clicky pen or whatever it is. 
it, it wasn't the same, you know, patience that we had for years. Like, where are those bent pens? We love taking those and giving them to people. I mean, it's becomes like this phenomenal marketing tool for like something so simple. And they don't, people don't forget it. Like if we go to a restaurant, when we were allowed to go to restaurants in the city, uh, we would always give pens to like the, the wait staff. And when we show up again, like, oh, we, we just, someone, we heard someone talking about a chiropractor, you know, we gave him your pen. Can we have another one, please? You know, <laughs> type of thing. So they're, they are truly great. Truly I've had great. patients come back into the, say, I, I went to the bank and there was your pen. I says, <laughs> I says, really? Oh, that's really cool. Then they said, then I went to this restaurant and there's your pen. I says, how many pens do you have? <laughs> Whatever, that, you know, it's, it's fun. Yeah, simple and easy, right? Like that, that also is a huge thing thing for marketing we don't need to make it as complex all the time so i love that that it's the, the simplicity and the bent pen so let's this segment now we're going to get jump into is called back to the future so you know the the tcp the chiropractic philanthropist if we had a time machine right now and we send you back in time to the younger version of yourself like right when you started practice or right when you graduated from chiropractic school um what would you say to your younger self or what would you tell them to do Probably get over yourself, <laughs> stop the fear, and get more mentors. I think early on, I was very fortunate. I was around people that became mentors to me. And I just, I was a pain in the tush. I just hung around people. I didn't ask for anything. I really kept my mouth shut and I listened. And I think that's the biggest thing for anybody out there. I get so many people that want to follow me around and practice and they want to tell me how much they know. I said, there's a lot of stuff I don't know even today. And I'm, and when I go ahead and I, I, I find people that I'm intrigued with, or I want to talk more with, it's not about me talking. I let them talk. I just want to hear what they have to say. And then every once in a while, there's that little tidbit and you start writing that down and it's like, okay, that makes it, that makes it better you. So be a better listener. Always being a better be listener. Be a better listener. Good. And find a mentor. Find a mentor. Because true mentors, they'll go ahead and give it to you for free. They're not there to go ahead and charge you for everything. They'll sit and break bread with you. You'll go out and have a libation, as Fred Barge used to say, which was one of my mentors. Um, it, it's just fantastic. And they, and when they and I think a, a true mentor appreciates somebody that wants to learn mm. and they invite you into their home with their family you share meals with them and it's that that to me is that's true success then yeah that's great so then let's go you know so we went from the past now let's go to the other end of the spectrum let's go to the future so what what does the future hold for for dr kevin fogarty now practice and life what are we looking forward to well, I got rid of the board of chiropractic. I'm no longer doing that, so that's good. Um, dedicating more so to to Life University. I mean, it's like I, like I said before, I truly, truly resonate with everything that they're about. Um, I mean, it's it's the motto to give, to do, to love, to serve out of a sense of abundance, and that's that's what I'm about. That's why. I'm, of my involvement are is so much with the profession itself. It's and Life University is growing. I think that's where I see making the greatest impact as chairman of the board because the board is is out there to go ahead and to provide a vision for the administration. We have an outstanding president, Dr. Rob Scott, who is just implementing that vision. Currently, Life University has 20 undergraduate programs. It has four master programs, and it has the crown jewel of them all, which is the largest doctor of chiropractic program in the world. That is, talk about influencing. That is so frigging cool. And the neat thing is, in the next four years, my daughter just started. I think there's, there's, there's a success there, Josh. When I see somebody like you, or your sister making the decision to be a chiropractor and, and me having a very small minuscule part of that, that, that to me is, is what gets my juices flowing. My daughter, who I said, look, I don't care what you want to be. I said, just be happy. And one day she says, 
in front of everybody at a big family dinner with friends, I'm going to be a chiropractor. And I was like, going, oh, that made me cry. And it's like, so she's in second quarter. She just finished second quarter. A lot smarter than me. She is a smart cookie. Um, with me, I went to school. She was for chiropractic, right? But she's straight A's. She's just <laughs> an amazing kid. And, and I think one of my goals, short-term goals, is to be able to be a, go across her, go across the stage with her. And uh, on the diplomas, uh, my name as chairman of the board is is on there. So seeing my signature with my daughters, that would be that's cool. That's yeah, really that cool. that's a cool future to look I'm forward looking to, forward right? to that. Yeah, yeah. All right. So here we go. So we got three final questions for you. Um, then we'll wrap things up for for the day. So first, who? is the greatest influence on the person you are today? I would probably say Fred Barge. Fred Barge taught me how to drink scotch and, and cognac. Um, but he taught me so many, he, he taught me that family value in chiropractic. I mean, after all, if you know anything about Fred Barge, he, his, he had so many sisters and brothers and aunts and uncles and cousins. And of course, his dad was a chiropractor and they all fed each other. I mean, they fed off each other as far as what chiropractic was. He learned from Gonstead. And he, the nicest thing is that and a short story with Fred is like, he always liked cognac. He, he always liked Cavassier, but he loved Remy Martin. So what I would do is I would buy him Remy Martin. And he said, and then after a while, and it was just to hear his stories. So it's again, shut up, listen to the story. And he would say, Kevin, it's time for a libation. And I says, all <laughs> right, let's go. Give him Remy Martin. I just tell me a story. Tell me about your dad. Tell me about whatever, you know, with, with how it was to be with Gonstead, how it was to be with B.J. Palmer. I, I, those were those were influences that. I remember to this day, and I think one of the biggest things, and here's something for the young people. He would say to me, Kevin, you're never going to get rich in chiropractic. However, chiropractic will afford you a great li living. And from that great living, you make investments, and that's what gets you rich. I think a lot of people want to take so many shortcuts, and that's what gets them in trouble with insurance companies and with the profession and with their state boards. And instead, it you know, provide the service, the money will come. Two great things from from Fred. All right, awesome. And you may have answered this, but you will we'll ask this one also. What's the best advice you have ever received? Provide the service, and the money will come. Perfect. It's and all last, about service. Okay. And then the last last of the three questions. What invaluable resource, whether it's a book or a podcast or something that you can't live without? Um, I think I would have to go with something uh, talking about money and, and, and building wealth. The Richest Man in Babylon. The Richest. It was written, the Richest Man in Babylon. It's like it's about paying yourself first, saving that 10 percent for your retirement. I think that book alone is fundamentally what I've always done, you know, just learn how to live off of seven tenths of your, of what you bring in, two tenths go down to pay down your debt. And one tenth is always going to your, your retirement and you never touch that money. And all of a sudden you learn really quick how compound interest works for you versus how it works against you with people that are in so much credit card debt. Mm, that's great. That's great. So everyone, I want to let you know, You'll be able to find all the resources uh, that we spoke about that are incredibly valuable in the show notes at thechiropracticphilanthropist.com. And Dr. Kevin Fogarty, thank you so much. This has been an absolute pleasure. Um, I guess this is more on the professional side, you know, versus me just having a conversation with you. So I want to thank you from, from me, from the profession, for taking the time out to share. Thanks for having me, Josh. We really appreciate it. Uh, and from the bottom of my heart, I'm very proud of you and everything that you're doing. So you've heard the struggles, you've heard the successes, and this episode is done. But there's still so much more to come and so much more to learn. 
head on over to the chiropracticphilanthropist.com and sign up for our newsletter where you'll receive free practice building tips and strategies, including how to market your practice with your very own podcast and so much more. Thanks for listening and we'll see you next time on the Chiropractic Philanthropist.